Hi, I'm Dr. Jennifer Curtin. I'm the co-founder and chief medical officer at Rhythm. A little history on me. Um, I had ME-CFS for about nine years. So um, I had it, I was mild and I had it uh, really throughout my medical training. So I was going through in an endless push crash cycle through all of my training. Um, you know, it was pretty brutal. And, you know, as I was going through my training as learning to be a provider, I was also a patient. I was undergoing a lot of workups throughout this in parallel. So it was kind of an interesting dual journey that I was on. But um, essentially what kind of ended up coming up was that I had a bunch of things that were undiagnosed that really kind of set me up to develop MECFS. Um, so I ended up having I had dysautonomia. Um, I'm hypermobile. I don't quite meet hypermobile EDS criteria, but I'm very close. And um, also had immune deficiency that was undiagnosed, um, autoimmune thyroid disorder, um, a bunch of different conditions that all kind of like, it really sort of made this picture clear of how things were stacking up. And then just, it was one hit after the other, after the other, and then boom, MECFS, post-exertional malaise, um, orthostatic intolerance, unrefreshing sleep, brain fog, worm finding difficulties, the whole works. Um, and so really for me, I basically went into a remission in um, 2019. So I've been in a remission for a little over five years. And really what helped me the most was really treating the underlying conditions that I had um, that really set me up for that post-exertional malaise. And um, so, you know, basically it was a combination of being on IVIG for multiple years the dose had to be increased. Um, it was highly suspected based on some studies I had that I had possibly a chronic inflammation, um, either like a mild autoimmune reaction or a chronic infection in my GI tract. Um, the IVIG helped dramatically with that. Um, the other one was treating the thyroid disorder. I ended up requiring T3 instead of T4. My body just did not seem to respond well to T4. Um, and additionally, um, I uh, ended up on a medication that really helped. I, I had mostly like orthostatic hypotension early on, and then it seemed to morph more into POTS later. Um, and medication I was put on that helped raise my blood pressure so that I wasn't hypotensive when I was standing up. I mean, there's nothing quite like not having enough blood flow to your brain to make you feel really exhausted and not be able to function or really do anything. Um, and there are multiple studies that show that even in ME-CFS patients who do not have POTS or dysautonomia per se um, on tilt table testing, they still have a significant drop in blood flow to their brain when they're tilted upright. Um, and how long it takes that drop in blood flow to their head to normalize when they lay flat again um, correlates with how severe they are. So the more severe the patient the longer it takes after they're laying flat for the blood flow to normalize to their head again. Um, and so this drop in blood flow to the brain, I mean, you can imagine your brain uses a ton of energy all of the time and it's coordinating everything. So if it's not getting perfused, a lot of things are going to go wrong. You're not going to feel well. Um, you're not going to be able to, to think that well either. Um, and so this is a really key key thing. And uh, there's some very interesting, um, there's a company called Stat Health where they're creating a device that um, you wear kind of in your ear and it measures, it looks at the blood flow in a particular blood vessel in the ear. And it's like, um, kind of gives you an idea of how much blood flow is getting up to your head. And so you can see that dynamically. Um, it's still in kind of the, the prototype phase as far as I'm aware. But that's something I'm I'm very, very excited to see and, and have people use as that becomes more widely available. Um, very exciting there. And, um, you know, so really creating rhythm, I when the pandemic hit, having a background, having, you know, lived personally with MECFS for so long and all these different comorbidities that are very uh, commonly triggered by uh, infections, I was just very concerned, as were a lot of people, that the pandemic was going to trigger a huge wave of, of additional people developing these kinds of infection, infection associated chronic conditions um, that are not that well served by the medical system as it stands. And um, lo and behold, start seeing long COVID emerging. And um, 
basically, you know, I was just noticing from people I knew who had it, that they were going through the same odyssey that I had gone through with MECFS 10 years prior. And it really didn't seem like a whole lot had changed. And so um, I started Rhythm with my co-founders, uh, Dr. Ryan Kellogg and Dr. Mike Snyder, who both also have personal experience with infection associated conditions. And we were really trying to build the system that we wished existed when we got sick. Um, and so we take a very detailed personalized approach trying to figure out, okay, what are the all of the different possible conditions that you may have that fall under these categories and that frequently overlap in this patient population? So things like POTS, orthostatic hypotension, um, in addition to MECFS, or if you have post-exertional malaise but don't quite meet the rest of the criteria for MECFS, um, you still want to manage that post-exertional malaise similarly. Um, also things like mast cell activation um, and immune deficiencies, certain autoimmune conditions like Sjogren's, uh, small fiber neuropathy. There's a whole slew of things that can overlap, joint hypermobility and hypermobile EDS, migraines um, are frequently comorbid with hypermobile people. And then there's also, um, you know, some things in terms of like structural things like um, higher instance of, of Chiari, um, possible elevated intracranial pressure in a subset of people, CSF leaks in people, especially with orthostatic hypotension. There's a whole bunch of things that you kind of really have to look into. And so we were trying to systematize that and see if we can really make that as streamlined as possible and kind of do that, that deep dive. Um, and then really see what's going on in each individual person and then tailor a treatment accordingly. And, you know, there aren't any FDA approved therapies for MECFS or long COVID at this point. Um, however, it doesn't mean that you can't try things off label. There's a lot of things that have been studied and there's a lot of things that I have seen help people notably. Um, and so really we come from that philosophy of like, just because there isn't an FDA approved treatment doesn't mean that you don't treat. And so that's really, there's a huge um, component of just our, our ethos on that. And, um, you know, as far as like, hey, I, I get this care is expensive right now because it is so in depth, I touch. Um, so we are working on essentially a so lower touch, cheaper option for people to try and get the care out to more people who need it at a more affordable price point as best we can. Um, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of development. Um, yeah, but we are working on it very diligently and, um, we're really hoping to have at least our initial kind of very early beta release coming out soon. It, it's just like, this is such an important area of medicine and, um, the patients in the, with these conditions are still very underserved. And I think, you know, one of our big missions at Rhythm is just to try and really try to get this care out to a lot more people at a price point that, that people can afford. And, you know, we're working on this. And if you have like suggestions, feedback, ideas, or you want to help with beta testing on some of our early releases, um, feel free to, to email us at support at rhythm.com. And uh, we would love to work with you on this process. Um, we involve patients in the, every aspect of what we do. We are patients ourselves. And so, you know, the idea here is, is really to to build with the community and try to get things that, that are going to help everybody the most.